Hi there, this is Prof. Johan from the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Pretoria. Welcome to my series on the Introduction to Chemical Engineering and Chemical Engineering Principles. Hi there, in this video lesson I want to show you how you can convert empirical formula from one unit system to another unit system. In my previous lesson on empirical formula, I told you that an empirical equation, you must use every single one of the variables in the units given so that you can calculate your function in the units given. And that is a limitation with empirical formula. So let's start with a normal formula. And I'm going to use the one for distance where we have S equals VT plus a half AT squared. Distance is in meters. Velocity is in meters per second. Time is in second. So this product is meters. Plus A is in meters per second squared. T squared is in seconds squared, which means this is in meters. And when we closely look at this equation, we realize that here is some sort of constant with no units. Let's now look at two examples. The first example, I'm going to continue from my previous slides, where I said that U equals 1,08 multiplied by K over CP rho. And I told you that U is in units of foot per second. K is in units of BTU foot hours degrees Fahrenheit. And I say that CP is in units of BTU over pound degrees Fahrenheit. And I said that rho is in units of pound per foot cubed. I also then said to you, now what if I was given K in SI units, which would be watt per meter Kelvin. And my CP in SI units, which would be kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. And then it's the also in SI units, which would be kilogram per cubic meter. Can I now calculate my velocity in meters per second? And the answer is yes, but via a long way. I first need to convert K from its SI unit to the imperial units, CP from the SI to the imperial units, density from the SI to the imperial units. Then using these, I calculate U in the imperial units then convert that back to my SI units so that I could calculate my velocity in SI units. Now you all agree that is the long way around. So let me show you how we do this the easy way. But there's a little bit of a trick. Remember I told you before that for the dimensionally consistent equation every single term must have the same units and that the constants have no units. In this case it is not true. So here we say u is a function of K, CP, and Rho. And for this to work, we then have this constant in front to make this true. We know that the left-hand side units and the right-hand side units is not the same, but can we make them the same? And the answer is yes, if that constant has units. So let's go and say that 1.08, that's the constant we had, will now be equals to U, CP, Rho, over K. So basically, we just rearrange the equation, which is equal to 1.08 K over CP multiplied by rho. Now, I can rewrite this so that 1.08 equals U CP rho over K. Just rearranging the equation and the units for the constant. So let's start. Velocity is foot per second. CP we have as BTU over pound degrees Fahrenheit. Density we have as pound per cubic foot. And K we have as BTU over foot hours degree Fahrenheit. And I write it one over because it is divided by my equation. If we now go, we can cancel the units out. The BTUs cancel out, the pounds cancel out, the degrees Fahrenheit cancel out. This foot cancel and that foot cancels. That out, we have a foot at the bottom. So that the units for my constant become hour over foot seconds. Now I know it's time at the top and time at the bottom, but an hour is not a second. It is both time, but they have different sizes. And this is the trick when we're talking about converting empirical equations. If we want to change the equation so that it is now in a different unit system, we need to convert this 
to the new unit system. So that when we put the new variables in with the new units, they will cancel out with the units of my constant. Because we want to go to SI units, we now need to do the following. So this is in units of hours over foot second. We now convert one hour to 3,600 seconds. That cancels out. We go one foot to 0 0.3048 meters. That cancels out. That cancels out. And we have a value of 12,756 one over meters. With this now being the new constant and its units. And thus our equation becomes with u in meters per second, k in watt per meter kelvin, cp in kilojoule per kilogram kelvin, and rho in kilograms per cubic meters. And there we have it, a new equation in which we can put our variables directly into the SI unit and calculate velocity in the SI unit. But remember, I cannot use this equation for the American English units. I need to use this equation. So let's look at an example of the conversion of another empirical equation from one unit system to another. So let's say we have an equation where we say CP equals A plus BT. In this case, I give you the constants A as 3.63 and B as 0 0.640. So this means the equation becomes 3.63 plus 0 0.640t. And in this equation, I tell you that Cp must be in units of calories per gram mole Kelvin and T in units of Kelvin. So let's say I want to keep Cp the same, but I want to input my temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. How do I now go about converting this equation so that I can put the temperature in Fahrenheit into the equation and not Kelvin? The first thing we need to work out is we need to figure out how to go from the degrees Kelvin to the degrees Fahrenheit. When we spoke about temperature last, we said that there are two types of temperature. There's a differential temperature and there's a point temperature. Now, which one is this? This is a point temperature because we put the temperature of the system into this equation the temperature at which the system is to calculate the cp we need to convert the temperature from the point temperature kelvin to the point temperature degrees fahrenheit i don't know how much you were listening to me in class but i always said to you that i convert temperature whether it's a differential temperature or a point temperature by writing down my scales and working everything out and that is still true but once I've done that, I know that my temperature in degrees Kelvin is T minus 32 divided by 1.8 plus 273. And you can see what I'm doing here is I'm converting the temperature in Fahrenheit to the temperature in degrees Celsius and then adding the 273 to get to my temperature in Kelvin. For converting this equation, I now take this and put it into that equation to convert my CP calculation from using a Kelvin input to a Fahrenheit input. This means that CP equals 3.63 plus 0 0.640 multiplied by that whole thing where I substitute the T for this new value. And guys, I'm not going to do the whole calculation. You are welcome to go do it in your own time. And it will yield 166.97 plus 0.35556t. But remember, in this equation, Cp is still in per degrees Kelvin. Can I convert that per degrees Kelvin so that my Cp will actually be in calories per gram mole degrees Fahrenheit? And the answer is yes. Remember what I said earlier, these two constants should have units. So the units for A should be calorie per gram mole Kelvin. And the units for B must be calories per gram mole Kelvin degree Fahrenheit. And now we must remember I am multiplying here with a degree Fahrenheit, which will then cancel out. Also, this is a per degree Kelvin 
and not a Kelvin point temperature. So if I want to convert this equation so that I can have my Cp in per Fahrenheit, I need to convert this Kelvin to a degree Fahrenheit. And what is the relationship between those? 1 Kelvin equals 1,8 degrees Rankine. And because this is a differential temperature, I can say that 1 delta Kelvin is 1,8 delta degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Rankine. In this case, it is the same because like I've explained in one of my classes, being a differential temperature, the offset is not there. To do this last conversion, I now need to say 16697 calories per gram mole Kelvin, then I multiply by 1 delta Kelvin divided by 1.8 delta degrees Fahrenheit equals 92.76 and then for the 0 0.35556 over gram mole Kelvin degree Fahrenheit 1,8 delta degree Fahrenheit and this will not be equals to 0 0.1975. The new equation will become Cp equals 92,76 plus 0 0.1975 and T with T in degrees Fahrenheit and Cp in calories per gram mole degrees Fahrenheit. I hope you found this video interesting and helpful. I'll be seeing you soon again with some more videos. Stay safe.